Welcome to Wrestling With Heart, a podcast looking at pro wrestlers giving back to their community. Join me, Stanley Carr, as I interview wrestling's hottest names who use their platforms as entertainers to raise awareness and do community service. Hello and welcome to another edition of Wrestling With Heart. This is the show where we talk with professional wrestlers and professional wrestling personalities about their lives in and outside of the ring as well as doing acts of charity work community service, volunteering, and spreading positivity. We're all about the positivity here on the show. And I've got a very special guest with me today. He has worked for a numerous amount of companies. He is the war chief, Suma Te Wokla. Suma, welcome to Wrestling With Heart. What's going on, man? Ah, it's good to have you on. Yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you for coming on. No problem, not a problem. Yeah, let's talk about your upbringing and childhood. Where are you from? From San Carlos Reservation, out there on the borders of Arizona and New Mexico. Okay. Yeah, it seems like a very rural area. Well, I mean, I don't know if you guys have been to a reservation or not, but um, that one right there is out there in the middle of the desert. So um, it's very rural. Uh-huh. Yeah, very small town. Um but I mean, there's a lot of community there, a lot of people doing things around there, hanging out, having a good time. Uh, wh- tell me about how you got into wrestling. Was pro wrestling something that you watched as a kid? Um, I think every every young boy has watched it as a kid with their dad or uncle or something like that. Um, me and a group of friends had uh, always gotten together and watched it, but I didn't get really too involved till my teenage years. They were wrestling on a cable access television show. So I would go watch them and uh, an actual independent company had went there for scouting. Mm-hmm. And I had been there and talked to them and they wanted to know if I wanted to train to be a professional wrestler. That's so, amazing. Yeah. Okay. Kind of ran with it. Yeah. And you had mentioned to me earlier you had watched wrestling as a kid religiously. Who were some of your favorites? Um. Well, I'm, I'm probably going to go with uh, Mr. Perfect. Kurt Henning, Dynamite Kid, um, Ravishing Rick Rude, the people that could really reach out and snatch a fan's emotions and just hold on to it. Um, I'm not really one of your your normal people that'll be like, oh, it was Hulk Hogan or Andre or... Nah, I really wasn't. I mean, I watched... uh, in later years, I watched Hulk Hogan over there in Japan, and same with Andre and a lot of other people. Like their Japan work was awesome, but when they came to the states, and not so much. Definitely, you have. Seems like you have more freedom when you go overseas to wrestle, and it seems like they do a lot more. Like it's really intense as opposed to the U.S., where it's just it's not. It's restricted. Well. I can tell you uh, from firsthand that uh, when you go overseas <laughs> and you, you wrestle in Japan, uh, it's, it's not as free. You have to work twice as hard. You need to know what you're doing. And if you don't, they let you know you're not as good as you think you are. <laughs> so... They went over there and they had a show that they knew how to wrestle. Same thing with like Legion of Doom and everyone else. It wasn't just, you know, uh, hooping and hollering and the fans going, ah. no, it's just. They really take it seriously in Japan. They really do. It's like as, a sport. As they should. And so you have wrestled several different places in your career, not just in the U.S., but all over the world. Is it fair to say Japan is 
one of your favorite places to work? Japan is. Um, I love Canada. Canada is awesome. Um, it, it would be in between those two. Uh, the fans are just so respectful. They they know who you are without saying it. They part. <laughs> oh, you champion. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> like it, it's it's totally totally different. So, the point where you knew you wanted to become a wrestler, you you found out about the Cable Access show, and the trainer basically, or someone was there, the recruiter was there asking if you were interested, and that's how you got started. Yeah. Um, well. When the recruiter came, um, it was me and my friend who, who no longer wrestles. Uh, we were going to go train, and he was like, well, I'm going to go train by myself. So I had this bad experience. I was like, well, I'll go train with you. Like, well, I don't really got the money, and I'll pay for both of us. We'll go train together. Why not? Right? So... We went and did that, and uh, we stayed wrestling and training together for years. Hmm. Ended up part of ways. Wow. But you got into it. You know, you started working out. You started getting in shape. You put in the work. Training's not easy. You really have to get your body in conditioned. What was your experience like? Man, I don't know what I signed up for. <laughs> that's that's really the conclusion that I first drew. Um, man, when you sign up for this, you better you better know what you're signing up for. And even then, like you, you don't know. You really don't know. Just say like you you go and do a show, okay. So that's a Friday. And you have another show Sunday. Okay, so that's one day's rest in between. That's fine, right? Mm -hmm. So say the following weekend, you have a show Friday. But they got you booked on a triple shot. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, so no no rest days. Man, I'm going to be tired. Say you work Friday. You work Saturday, but Saturday... Man, some people didn't show up. So they're going to book you for a couple extra matches on the show. So you're not wrestling once, but you wrestle twice. Then you get to Sunday and you're beat. You're done. Now, it's not uncommon for this to happen. And it's not uncommon for you to wrestle two, three times on one show. Three times in a row. People don't know this. Man, you run yourself into the ground. And then they expect you to jump back up and do it all over again. Well, the human body is not, not made to, to do this one time, what on three times in one day. So conditioning yourself to do that, be able to run like that is insane. Yeah, it's, it's very hectic. And so you just have to really apply yourself and put in the work. And you have won so many championships and wrestled against so many guys. Who have been some of your favorites to work against? Um, today, I would say... Ricky Fuji was one of one of my favorites, one of my most memorable. Um, Chewy Martinez was fun. We had fun. Um, Brick Savage, that was that was a good one. Um, Smoke Signals, they're always good to work with. 
anyone who ever's looking for a solid tag team, they need to work with them. Uh, the luchador that I worked with would have to be Nightmare Azteca. Mm. That's really good. Worked with a yeah. variety of different opponents, different people. Yeah, I try, I, try, I try not to stay in the same style. So that leaves you in a box, and I don't, I don't want to be there. Yeah. What would you say your style is? Um, I'm definitely a strong style. I'm definitely a strong style. I prefer that than anything. Like I can do aerial. I I do the flips and stuff like that, but I'd rather just uh, stick with a strong. The first couple of weeks, you're going to be bruised all over just from your body not being used to it, learning how to hit them properly, um, taking your bumps, you're, you're going to be sore all over, um, your elbows, your ankles, your shins will be bruised because you got to learn how to bunt, land properly to take a bump properly. And then even going through your your first couple years or even just continuing on down the line through your career, like you'll end up with broken bones. I've, I've wrestled with broken fingers, broken hand, um, and numerous amounts of broken little things that is taped together. Wow. But, uh, taped together, uh, three inch deep gouge in my back that was pretty gnarly but i mean it it happens yeah you've had your fair share of injuries and bruises and just all around you have to discipline yourself really it's it's one thing to be in shape, but it's another to be in what, we, what they call in ring shape. Basically, no. trying to trying to really get your body to say, "Okay, I'm ready for another day of this. Let's go." You know, you have to really commit yeah. yourself to that. Most definitely, and there's multiple levels of of that specific ring shape. Um, you could have all the wind in the world and you have it knocked right back out of you. And then you got to have the will to get back up. You've got to have the, um, the mindset to know if you get busted open, stay calm. Mm -hmm. Don't freak out. Because there are some people that freak out. There are some people who go into panic attacks. There's a variety of uh, situations you can find yourself in and forget to stay calm. The best thing to do is stay calm, no matter what it is. Because there's, there's nothing better to do. Well, let's switch gears now and talk about some of the work you've done outside of the ring. You've worked with... Yes. You've done you've done a lot of charity work and worked with a lot of organizations. What tell me about some of the stuff you've done in your community to help others? Native Native Voice Entertainment has been really dedicated to bringing awareness to uh, MMIW and MMIWR. So we have done shows in Arizona, Kansas. Nebraska, um, all over, raising funds to donate and bring awareness to this problem. I don't know if people or if enough people know that indigenous people are one of the smallest populated. We're the smallest people in the population. And we're of the highest crime rate, and nothing is being done. No one's, no one's being 
brought to trial. No one's being thrown in no jails. That's that's just heartbreaking to hear that. Yeah, no, they yeah. don't. We want we want people to them to anybody. We're we're just now becoming uh, of relevance. It was okay for people to dress up as us. We're still doing that. It's okay to dress up like a Native American, but if you dress up like any other people, any other race, it's not okay. You're deemed a racist. But if you dress up like an indigenous person, a Native American, then, you know, Everyone else has rights for that vote except. But back to the charity thing. Um, we here at uh, Native Ways Entertainment also do uh, and in food drives. Um, another sad thing. You know how many homeless people there are? Thousands. <sighs> Hundreds of thousands, man. And they have more people coming into this country daily. But yet you could have people that work two jobs. Two jobs and still be homeless. People who work have to sleep on the street. That's insane to me. But yet people get in trouble for making those tiny home projects to get these people off the street. So what we do is we put together boxes, just like any other shelter or anything, you know. And we give out food. We give out uh, bag lunches. We do clothing bribes. Yeah. What? One of, one of our main bases is in um, Scottsdale, Arizona. And that's one of um, they're, they're not it's not a poor area. I'll just say that. It's not a poor area. So um, to ask them to give back a little bit don't hurt and it helps with the people who are out there with mental disease and uh, I can't say drug addiction because I you can't you can't help people with drug addiction they can help themselves like um we direct them to one of my my other brothers that does uh, sober living houses but that's that's all we can do but food clothes water and direct them to sobriety well it's really nice that you're able to do that you know because like you said the person's got to get themselves help, but if you kind of meet them halfway there to some extent, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a good, that's a step, you know, that is a step to progress. And it's just, it's just, it's just so gut wrenching to hear about the, the stuff that's going on. And from the bottom of my heart, I, I'm very sorry. And I hope that there is a way that this can all in time be resolved. 
That's that's the goal. Or at least slow it down. Something. Something has to give somewhere sometime. Everybody deserves equal treatment, equal rights, and oh man. There's just so many things in the world that require attention and that's one of them the discrimination and uh lack of respect for the native americans because they are the ones that first settled in the u in the in america before anybody yep we know to teach each other with a hell of a lot more respect we know that we have to treat the world, the earth, the sky, the water with much more respect than what it is today. Mm -hmm. And now look at the condition that it's in. When you go certain places, you can't drink the water out of the faucet without giving a softener and a filter. What is that? Look what we've done. Now, myself, when I first started wrestling, I was I was told, um, if you ever become a title holder, if you ever become a champion somewhere, um, that title doesn't make you a champion. So what you do with that title that makes you win. So I see a lot of people running around with their belts and showing them off. And I always ask them, so what do you do for your people? What do you do for your community? What do you do with your newfound championship? I speak to people about uh, cancer, cancer awareness. I had stage four cancer from ear to ear. I had thyroid cancer, I had it removed. So I speak with a lot of people about that, very open about it. So, there are so many ways that other people could help you. If it's giving, it's giving. It doesn't necessarily have to be that. But they could just give a minute of their time. I think not enough people remember that the fans made them who they are. Like, you're, you're just a normal person without them. You're just somebody trying to be someone. If you don't got your fans, you, you who are you really? You need to give back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very interesting way of looking at it. For me, it's the only that you have to. Mm -hmm. It's a must. Yes. Why do you feel passionate about helping out in your community? I've been given a platform. Why not use it for a positive? Like I was saying, um, I didn't. I mean, I did this, I worked for this, but it was given to me. My community, my surrounding area, the fans are the ones that said, hey, you know what? We're gonna get behind that guy. Now, without that, what? Again, I'm, I'm just a normal person. 
So if I, I see people struggling, like if one of them messages me and says, hey, you got a minute, bro? Yeah, you know what? I do. What? You need to talk. It's, it's important for us to take that time. I'm not saying that everybody's got to like drop what they're doing or whatever. I'm saying just you do need to take some time out for it. These things right here usually consume about 50% of my day. You know, people are so concerned about uh, profit and what they can gain instead of what they can give. So instead of helping their, their fellow man or woman, they're reaching in their pockets to see what they can gain. Well, we forget that if you reach down and help someone up and you help clean them up, you gain a friend. You gain someone that can be loyal to you. So there is gain in helping. Plus, you gain back a piece of that you may have gave away years ago, days ago, whenever, when you didn't quite know it. You get back a piece of yourself. When you, you give back, it comes back in all different shapes, forms, and sizes. Yes. So... Don't don't always look for the instant gratification when you do that. Just know that it is coming and you 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 do get back. Well well said there. Suma, this has been wonderful getting the chance to speak with you, getting the chance to talk with you means a lot to me and to the listeners and viewers that are watching this on YouTube. Where can people find more about you? Are you on social media? Uh, all social media platforms except Twitter because I don't pay no attention to my Twitter account, honestly. So to those who tweet me or whatever, I do apologize. Um, I spend most of my time on Facebook, Instagram, uh, the other video um, platform. Yeah, TikTok. Instagram. And there's another one, Capcom or something like that. I don't, I don't know what it is. Some video editing one, but uh, mostly those three. Go Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And you can catch me on those easy. If you find me on those, look me under uh, Sumite Woka, and you'll you'll find me. All right, Suma. Thanks again, and you're more than welcome to come back. Thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. And uh, if you ever want to do another video, let me know. Of course. Absolutely. Right. You're Thank more you than welcome to come back. All right. Take care. Thanks, guys. Bye. This is Wrestling With Heart. I hope you found this podcast to be informative and entertaining. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and look out for the next edition.